Please welcome to the stage, Professor of Pediatrics at UAB and co-founder of Culture City, Dr. Michelle Kong. But I'm weak. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. That was incredible. Cody, wow, thank you for that beautiful rendition. Give him a big round of applause again. I am so happy tonight to see each and every one of you. Tonight's the first night that our family came together in one car to Culture Ball. So um, <laughs> this is a very special night for us as well. Um, Culture City, tonight we remember and we celebrate a decade of Culture City, a journey marked by dedication and really a collective commitment to inclusivity and to accessibility. The story may have begun with our family but today, it is a story that belongs to everyone, to all of you. It is a movement, a movement where we had this fervent desire for change, a change towards a society where everyone would belong, no matter who you are, and everyone would have a spot at the table. So as I reflect back on the last 10 years of Culture City, several key moments come to mind. Um, I don't see, I, my, both my boys are there. <laughs> so the, Julian is here somewhere. I've seen him a few times tonight, but we always joke and say we'll see each other maybe tonight at 2 a.m. But um, so I think the first has to be when he and I met on a plane. It was a chance encounter on a flight from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia to Calgary, Canada, where we were both studying medicine. He asked, I said yes, not on the plane, but, um, and here I am, I ended up in Birmingham, Alabama, instead of Birmingham, England. And uh, it's, true, it's a true story. Um, and uh, it's, it's been an incredible, incredible ride. Um, our little unit of two expanded when Abram and Judah made us parents. But our life trajectory really changed when Abram was diagnosed with autism. He stopped talking and had a really difficult time with regulating his senses. Many years later, he would tell us that it was because his brain felt like it was on fire. The sounds are often loud and chaotic. And no matter what he was thinking, instead of words, often only sound came. In our journey with him daily, we saw how things that are so easy for us sometimes, and sometimes we take for granted, going to the grocery store, getting your hair cut, going to a movie theater, can be so harsh and so difficult for someone living with a disability. And the realization that our society and our world was ill-equipped and not prepared to embrace differences came sharply into focus through our many experiences, the stares, the comments, the judgment that came because he sounded different and he behaved in a different way than what was expected of him. And soon we stopped going out because it was just too hard. Without realizing it, we became isolated. Judah, his brother, just turned 14 yesterday. Um, happy birthday again. Um, but when he, when he was uh, a wise two-year-old, he unrelentlessly and persistently asked us why we were not going out. Why are we always at home? And so that really kicked us out from our status quo. The second life-altering moment that comes to mind when I think about this 10 years happened four years ago, when I heard the words, 
you had a stroke, I was really afraid. And for the first time in my life, I felt out of control. Now, I'm an ICU doctor, and so control is very important, and I need to know. But with this, I did not know. I was fully immersed in the inclusivity and disability movement. I mean, this is what I do and breathe. But at the same time, when it came to myself, it felt really unreal and foreign. It was just, how is it even possible? And really well intending comments and concerns from people around me just made me really sad. And the constant thumping in my ear, the numbness, the tingling, and sometimes lost words mid-sentence is disorienting and honestly quite frustrating. And so again, I was present physically, but without realizing it, I was isolated again from my community. To hide my fears and my vulnerabilities, I close everyone off. My experience showed me and taught me that a disability can happen to anyone at any time. And inclusion, inclusion was not yet standard for everyone. And yet it should be, but it wasn't. And inclusion, community, and belonging is truly fundamentally what makes us human. And so, as I think about Culture City in the last 10 years, you know, it was founded on the belief, with the belief that we can change the lens and the perspective with which we view disability. Name with the hope and the idea of cultural transformation. The mission was simple and yet powerful in that no one is to ever feel isolated. In 10 years, as you guys have experienced tonight and seen uh, across the last um, few hours, we have done remarkable things together. We have grown from one city, Birmingham, Alabama, my favorite city, I love the city, to hundreds of city in, <laughs> in 24 countries. And we have given out a million sensory bags trained 900,000 individuals, directly impacted 2.5 million families. Yes. And just earlier this year, you've heard this from uh, Bart and Daniel, our dear friends and our board members, two house bill was passed that mandates every police officer, firefighters, EMS provider has to be trained with the Culture City Inclusion Training. And that is incredible. And as, we have, and as we have set the standard for accessibility and what it means for our society, we've continued to innovate. As you have heard, we recently just launched Koji, the world's first AI-based multilingual talker that is accessible and free for all. And it has given a voice to those who are non-speaking. In just a few short weeks, we've had 50,000 downloads, 50,000, and not just downloads, but active users. Yes. And it's really not just about the tool or the technology or the app. At the end of the day, it's really about empowerment. It's about giving a platform and an avenue for people and individuals who have communication barriers, whether it's from a stroke or it's from autism, a means to have their voice be heard and to be seen. And so, as I look across this room tonight and I see each and every one of you, tonight stands out as another critical moment in our 10-year history. Because it's, as I look at you and I, and, I, and I see this beautiful room of just diverse individuals, we are unique and diverse in our neurology. We are of a different background, talent, and skill. But guess what? We are all united in a singular mission, singular mission of inclusion. And that is powerful. When I see you, 
and all of us together, I see Culture City. As we celebrate tonight, we celebrate not what we have achieved, but really the spirit of what we represent. It's not about the numbers. Numbers are great, but it's not about the numbers. It is about the, the, the heart. It's not about changing policies. It is about changing minds and hearts. And I am so filled with gratitude. I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. On behalf of our team, our board, we are here together because of you. You have propelled this movement. From those of you who have been with us from day one, I see you. And those of us who we're meeting for the first time tonight, we are here because of you. And dare I say, as important as the last 10 years have been, perhaps what's even more important is where will we be in the next 10 years? Where will we be? And I'm gonna challenge myself and I'm gonna challenge you, all of us together collectively, that we need a future. We need a future where everyone, everywhere belongs. In our homes, in our workplace, and in our community. And make every single moment inclusive. After all, we make the nevers possible. Thank you.